And welcome back, Pitt and Bowling Green was on the slate for the women. That's who they started with. Tough way to start the season on the road at Pitt, at Bowling Green. We'll go to a Pitt box score for you first. There's your box score. Youngstown State drops this one 78 to 58, dropping them to 0 and 1. A uh, little tidbit, it was 46-46 midway through the second half. Brandy Brown, arguably the Penguins, they thought their best player overall, definitely their best player down low. She is their best player. Okay. Let's not kid anybody. <laughs> she picks up her fourth foul with the score tied 46-46, and Pitt went on a 17-0 run to kind of put that one away. Brown, despite you know having to lead the game, 20 points, seven rebounds. Bogey Dimitrov with 14 points, 11 rebounds. Um, Jenkins with six points and five assists, and also Thompson pitches in with five points for the Penguins. And that was against Pitt. We'll go to the Bowling Green box score now. Sorry, we'll come back. Here, there's the Bowling Green box score for you. Youngstown say if you check that uh, percentage, 25% from the field is not going to get it done, especially on the road as they drop this one, 86 to 40. Bowling Green improved to two and one with it with that win. Randy Brown, 12 points, two rebounds, and an assist. Bogey Dimitrov with seven points, three rebounds, and Kenya Middlebrooks with six points and two rebounds. And I had the call at the Beagley Center for the home opener. Youngstown State drops to IPFW 73-61. Tough contest, just not enough scoring because you see Brandy Brown had the 29 points, nine rebounds, but nobody else in double figures. Youngstown State shot 39%, 22 of 68. IPFW was good for 44%, 26 of 59. The Penguins are in the midst of a 34 game losing streak coming into this game against Bucknell at home. Did they get the win? Let's find out. These are early highlights against Bucknell. Here we'll see Jenkins for three giving the Penguins an early lead. And Macy Norty picking the pocket, taking it coast to coast, laying it up with a deuce. Then we'll see a series of threes here for the Penguins and you know, the three-point shooting this game really, I think, led to this victory. First one from Kenya Middlebrooks over there and spotting up in the corner. And then the next two from the freshman. This is what she came here to do. She has that rainbow release, but it drops the first time. Then Hornberger gets it right back. She wants it, she's clapping her hands, gets it, fires it, drills it. Yeah, she her eyes light up when the other team runs zone. As you can see, Bucknell was in that 2-3 zone there. And here's Kenya Middlebrooks, coast to coast. Finishing for the Penguins, giving them a four-point lead. Another post presence the Penguins have. Here's Hornberger, good dish to Schlegel. Another big body in there next to Brandy Brown. And then speaking of Brandy Brown, once this game, you know, kind of gets into crunch time in the last couple minutes, you can leave it to her to kind of put it away. You see him up nine, make it 11 as the big, you know, the center running the running the floor for the Penguins. She can do it all. She goes inside and outside. Speaking of outside, how about a triple? She didn't do a lot of this last year, but now she has it. It's in her repertoire. That's huge for her because, you know, her being able to stretch that defense, making the other team centers come out and guard her. And as you can see, the jubilation for the Penguins snapping that 34-game winning streak. 71-57, your final. As YSU shot 38% from the field, but now, but now actually outshot YSU, but offensive rebounds and turnovers, you know, sometimes can be the key to victory. Macy Norty, nine points, three assists, four steals. Heidi Schlegel chipped in with 11 points and four rebounds. And Brandy Brown, again, the lead scorer, 23 points and 11 rebounds. So Bob Bolden gets his first win and snaps the streak. Could they go for two in a row with Ohio coming in, a max school? We'll go to the highlight. Like you said, the Penguins going for their second straight win. Trying to get after that, uh, that UConn record going on right now. You gotta start somewhere. Like you said, OU coming to the Beagley Center as both the men and women loading up with max schools early on. There's Macy Norty pulling up from the free throw line with a smooth J. She loves that shot in transition. Now they go to Brandy Brown. Look at the ball movement. Swinging around Brandy in the deep corner for three. Like we just talked about last game, that three point shot from her really you know, helps them open up their offense. And then Jenkins goes coast to coast. She's got a lot quicker this season, both offensively and defensively. Norty's always been quick. Yeah, Norty, so that's the second how we've seen from her. There's Jenkins lining it up for three. You see the Penguins down 10 at that point, but they start climbing back in it right here. Yeah, they go on a big time run. OU only ends up with 52. You see we're at the five minute mark, so the Penguins end up going a 13 to one run from this point on, and Tierra Jones a big part of that. Look at this move in the lane. Kind of going in and out, like you said, that pulls them to within two. And here we'll see Macy Norty with the score tied. With a minute left, she's gonna go. 
coast to coast. She's going to absorb the contact right here and the foul, giving the Penguins the three-point lead after the free throw. And they do go on to get that second win against the Bobcats. Final score, 60 to 52. Penguins improved to two and three. Penguins shooting 43% from the field, helping them you know, come back in that game. Like you said, defense a big part of it, holding no U to, to kind of a dry spell towards the end of that game. Brandy Brown, once again, leading the way, 17.6 rebounds and two blocks. Jones with 14 points and seven rebounds, and Macy Norty, nine points, four rebounds, and three assists for the Penguins. And it's amazing what Bob Bolden is doing with a similar roster than they had last season. I mean, it's, it's the same group of people, but he's instilling something different in their minds. Yeah, he's using them all to their individual strengths. We, we know Brandy Brown's our best player, and the fact that she's added that outside you know, part of part to her game helps her really stretch the court and open up the shooting because you know, a lot of shooters on this team, Dimitrov, uh, Middlebrooks, Hornberger, they can all shoot it from deep. So with Brooks able to open up more floor space, leaving them more open threes. Yeah, Brandy Brown, you have Tierra Jones, Heidi Schlegel. Last season it was only one girl down there. It was Brandy Brown. Now you bring in Schlegel, Tierra Jones is back for the Rand product. She starts getting it going. It helps out your best player in Brandy Brown when there's a couple other girls down there taking up some space and, and occupying some defenders. Yeah, and you can't double team Brandy anymore because she has other people to dish the ball off to. And she, I mean, she's a great passer. We see her with several assists every game, so she knows how to find people when they teams come to double team her. And, and the big thing with that double team, they love shooting that three ball. So if they can start shooting that at a higher percent, you know, three's more than two yep. all the time. So they could possibly get some more victories in the future. We'll go to the Penguin preview now. We'll start with women's basketball. That's what they have coming up December 1st, 7 o'clock. Women's basketball will be at Kent State. December 4th, they will be at American. I possibly might have the call for that one in Washington, D.C. December 12th, 2 p.m., women's basketball at Western Michigan. So a lot of road contests. They're going to have to be road warriors during this stretch. And that's, you know, that's a good test them. We've seen them get off the side at home, but that losing streak, you know, those two wins are at home, so they still do have a little losing streak to try to get off their backs on the road. And like we said, they just played OU, a couple more MAC schools. They play Kent State and Western Michigan, two teams that, you know, on the road, it's a difficult game, but they're beatable teams. And I honestly don't know much about American, but you know, on the road, it's just a you know, good test on a weekend for this uh, Penguins team. And move it further in. This is the men's slate. They will be at Milwaukee on the second. That's an 8 p.m. start. They're going to jump into the Horizon League now on the fourth. They will be at Green Bay. So two tough contests there. Men's basketball will be at Robert Morris, trying to get some revenge from that last season defeat. They came into the Beagley Center and beat the Penguins last year. They will have that one on December 11th at 7 o'clock. You took the words right from my mouth. You know, they've had this heavy max schedule so far. Now they jump right into Horizon League play. I think the Horizon League jumps into conference play. You know, sooner than any other conference in the nation. Milwaukee, just they played a very good Marquette team a couple days ago, only lost by six, so that'll be a tough, you know, we'll get a sense of how Youngstown State will match up in the Horizon League when they go to Milwaukee this coming week, and also Green Bay on the fourth, and like you said, Robert Morris, they have a little revenge set on their minds for the team from Pennsylvania. And the Penguins hopefully could get things going. Uh, women's and men's off to that great start. Women's already at two and three, men's at four and one. What are your early season projections maybe for the men's and women's? Well, it's hard to tell now because of, you know, they gotta, they're jump, it's hard to tell we gotta jump into conference play first. So I don't wanna give either team, you know, too much, to, too much credit thus far. Let's see what happens. Well, we'll see and we'll look forward to all that thing, all those things coming up for the women's and the men's. For Zach Humphreys. And Pat Andrews. We'll see you next week on the Penguin Rundown.